welcome back to the channel guys today we are installing an electrical heated towel rack it is critical to make precise markings on the wall where you are mounting the brackets being off by even a couple millimeters may give you problems since there is not much play in the supports Finding at least one stud is crucial for a towel rack, as it will take a lot of abuse, especially as towels may need to be yanked off the rack in a hurry in compromising situations. But unfortunately, only half of this rack lines up with a stud, forcing us to use a drywall anchor for the other half. This one here came with the set, so I am just going to use it. Turns out this plastic anchor did not hold up very well. Maybe I made this hole too large? Well, I've got a special screw shelf just for this purpose. I'll give these self-tapping screwable anchors a try. Again, they don't work either. It's time to go to the store. And we're back from the store with some toggle bolts. I think these are rated about 80 pounds a piece. After two failed attempts, I was so excited to try these out that I left my Sunday shirt on. Well, folks, we'd be all finished up by now if we had an outlet in our bathroom. I probably wouldn't even bother hardwiring this rack. But as you can see, this is now what needs to be done. This is a good spot for a shameless self-promotion. Please give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let's clear out some of this furniture to give us access to the back side of this wall. We will need to fish the wire down through the wall and then over to this outlet. The first step will be removing this baseboard here. I want to contain the holes I created in this wall below the top of this baseboard. That way we can easily cover it back up without doing any drywall repair. Using a small board like this spreads out the force from the pry bar so that the wall is protected from damage. These were some heavy duty nails they used to install this baseboard many years ago. I really like this nail pulling pliers. It made for easy work. After getting this baseboard out to my shop, I went ahead and removed the remaining nails. I will also remove the extra caulk that is attached to this baseboard. Well that's not very shocking. I am cutting out a small hole in this electrical box in order to run the wire here. Here I am making a small channel for this wire to sit in that I will eventually cover back over with the baseboard. Please don't tell my wife I know how to use this. Now comes the most challenging part, I think. Fishing this wire down through the wall. I 
I quickly realized this tiny hole was not going to cut it. I needed to expand the opening so that I could get my entire hand in here in order to find this wire. The insulation in this wall also made this more difficult as it kept grabbing and twisting the wire. This is an interior wall, but I assume the builders added extra insulation here to dampen the sound of those hair dryers. This is much easier with two people. Having one person pull while the other person feeds the wire. But it wasn't too bad doing this myself. What a relief to finally get that part done. Now all that is left is hooking up the wires before we put everything back together. Here is a shot of that wire that will run right behind the baseboard. All the drywall damage will be nicely hidden. I am not driving in nails anywhere near my wires. In fact, you don't need many nails to hold up a baseboard, especially after you caulk it. This paint here has been sitting at least five years. I'm really worried that it is not going to match the wall. This top is very rusted and several rusty pieces from the rim fell off into the paint. <laughs> 